big play when the Argos needed one. First down at the 15, first trip to the red zone. Robertson off the red right side, close to five, down to the 10. Bart Andrews continues with the run. He wants to try and get, even though the Calgary snap beater defense has played well against it, he wants to stay stubborn with the run, try and create some second and medium, second and short situations for Cody Pickett. Just the fifth trip to the red zone in the last four games. And 0 for 4, this is an area where Bart Andrus' team has to improve. Second down, lots of time, looking to the corner. Touchdown, P.K. Sam. In tight coverage, but Sam is back in the Argo lineup and into the end zone. Absolutely right, Chris. It was tight coverage by Ronnie Amani but this is the confidence and this is that chemistry I talked about early on between Cody Pickett and PK Sam from their NFL Europe days he trusted PK Sam over there in the corner right inside that goal line threw it over there and like, allowed his receiver to make a play for him or touched out in seven CFL games for PK Sam headlock the extra point and the Argos have the lead after the fumble recovery. Kim here, he's right there in your screen. Now he's gonna do this and then wanna do that and then he puts the brakes on right in this corner. Well covered by Ronnie Amati, but this is the trust between Cody Pickett and Sam and Sam makes the play. So the Argos now have 30 points off turnovers this season. That's seventh in the league. Stampeders leading in that department, 98. And here's Ryan, the man who fumbled, trying to atone for that, and he brings it up close to the 40. And now, a little more urgency for that sputtering Calgary offense. More urgency, but I'm not sure that they're going to be able to take and pick up yardage in chunks here, just because of the style of defense that Toronto is giving them right now. And that's a lot of zone and hey. taking away those deep routes. Sure. Numbers you just don't often see with Henry Burris. First meeting of the year between these two teams. Calgary outscored Toronto 31 0 in the second half. Here's the other. Oh, there's another big play by a corner. And Jordan Younger unloads on Brett Ralph. Defense that wants to give you three or four yards and a headache. And that's what they do here as Younger steps into Ralph. And the Calgary Stamp Peters are going to have to resign themselves to the fact that they're going to have to take those hits, pick up the five, the six, the seven yard gains. Now the Stamps go to hurry up trying to change the tempo here. Second down, and there's a completion. A little look into the London native. Ryan Thelwell, the first down to the Argo 49. There are seams and openings in his own defense like this, and it's a matter of whether or not you can be patient with it. In the first half, Henry Burris was not patient. He was trying to look for the big play. It wasn't there. Now back-to-back -back throws that are underneath 10 yards, one to Thelwell and one to Brent Brown. First catch of the night for Thelwell. It goes for 17 yards. Fake to Reynolds. There's another look in, and Nick Lewis will drive down to the 30. Back-to-back -back first down plays for Burris. This 19 to Nick Lewis. And he gives Nick Lewis the football early enough that Lewis can turn his shoulder square to the line and then pick up some yards after the catch. And when the receiver of Nick Lewis's stature and his abilities comes across the middle, if he can turn his shoulders and he doesn't mind taking it back, he often becomes the hammer. Three receivers in motion in the backfield, and now Reynolds, who's set up as a receiver, back in behind Burris to take the handoff. Drives the right side and not much there as it was shut down by Claude Harriet. Claude Harriet held his ground and he got some help from Kevin Ivan flowing to the football as well. Devontae Edwards now checks in as an extra deep back as Kevin Huntley heads off. Don't believe we've seen Byron Parker on defense yet in this game. Nope. Passing situation. And second and nine. And a screen. Reynolds cuts it back and gets 
the first down. Little second effort by Joffrey Reynolds. Well, it really, it really was the second effort, and it was a play call at a perfect time. There's Moreno, and there's Kevin Ivan. Two linebackers are often the guys that are going to have to make the tackle on a screen play, but you see they overload the left side of the line of scrimmage, and the screen pass comes out to the defensive right side, so that gets them in a chase, and a little second effort by Jonathan Reynolds gets him the first down. Ran through the tackle of Jason Shivers. There's an injured Argo. Etienne Lagarde, the number two pick in the 2009 draft, who takes the spot of Adriano Belli out with a knee infection. The Argos weren't sure right up until game time whether or not Belli could go. They were not confident, but Adriano is one of the few that can, uh, can play under extreme duress, but not tonight. Lagarde, one of the Young draft choices the Argos are really excited about. First round pick out of Laval. Top defensive lineman in CIS action in Absolutely. 2008. The guy who didn't start playing till he was 20, he was a basketball player. Didn't want to get down in the paint. The bitch and leg are A. So the clock running. You think he could rebound? I don't know about his vertical, but, uh, he, just but he got a you lot of room. He blocked you out. Nice play for Reynolds and Jermaine Copeland. Touchdown! Breaks the plane and gets in, and the Stampeders answer the Ergo touchdown score. They answer it by being patient enough early on in the drive to continue to pull the defensive linebackers and the secondary guys remember when i showed you that three deep zone and how the underneath guys they get drawn up by the patients early on in this drive you can see that copeland does cross the plane of the goal line with the football his seven yes seven touchdowns on the season we have reached the halfway point he had seven all of last year Big season, and DeAngelis ties the score. So suddenly some offense here, third quarter. Out near the 40. Had a good night, 23 on that return. Well, now he's got the completions. 12 touchdown pass of this season. And again, his favorite target as he's been throughout his career, Jermaine Copeland. That guy was pretty good. It is four years in Calgary. And yet Henry Burris is rewriting Stamp's record book. And you wonder if some of the offensive adjustments now we're going to see a very different game as this third quarter comes to an end. Two offensive touchdowns, one off a turnover, and then Burris with the answer. Cody Pickett back to work looking deep for P.K. Sam. He's got it. Airtight coverage, and he still beats Ronnie Amani. Back to back. P.K. Sam catches for the Argos. Well, there's definitely a level of trust between Cody Pickett and Sam. We've seen that now in back-to-back -back plays. One for a touchdown and one here deep. And how about the athletic ability of P.K. Sam to control his body and be able to turn back the ball thrown to his outside shoulder. This is great body control by Sam and a one-hand catch. I don't think that other hand ever gets there until the end of it. 33 yards, that's the biggest play of the game for Toronto. Hey, for either hey. team. And a first down inside the Argo 40. Wide open, Jamal Robertson. First down. And Dwight Anderson will drag him down. That's the 10th catch of the night for Jamal Robertson. Uh, you gotta love that Jamal Robertson does not go out of bounds at the end of this usually a running back coming out of the backfield and he's right there as he comes out usually they're going to cut back against the flow into the middle he does the first one he stays to the sideline and then he'll rather take the hit to get an extra yard from dwight anderson than step out of bounds running backs don't often do that so 10 catches six carries on the night as his role has changed first down pick it look up got it away pk sam and he can't reach it Looked like
Mikey had a step on Amadi again, and the ball just out of reach. Yeah, but you know what? P.K. Sam, right at the end there, you saw him pointing to himself, and he was basically telling his quarterback that's his fault, that he didn't run the route correctly. That was a corner route that basically was supposed to develop into the seam where Cody Pickett throws it to a spot in the corner of the end zone. And you can see right here, there's P.K. Sam. There's where he starts. Hits the line of scrimmage. Now, he flattens it out when he makes his break. Pressure coming off the edge again from Shannon James. And Pickett will take a hit. Pretty good pocket presence, no? Absolutely. Second and ten. Pulls it down. Dumps it off. There's another catch. And then gets cut down. That's a big defensive play by Keon Raymond into the game as the replacement on the corner for Brandon Browder when it looked like Robertson had first down yardage. He is going to be stopped about a yard short on the final play of this third quarter. We think we got a decision for Bart Andrus, and I don't think he's going to wait long. And now we are told that it is the end of the quarter as we await the Medlock field goal as the Argos try to take the lead. Third quarter stats are brought to you by Tim Hortons. Always fresh, always. It's been an interesting game. That first half was all defense. First half of the third quarter, we saw some more defense, and all of a sudden, the offenses are starting to click in. The Argonauts throwing the ball deeper. P.K. Sam has a, a long one and a catch. They've been incomplete on a couple, but at least, Chris, in that third quarter, they tried to push the ball. The previous three meetings between these two teams, Calgary outscored Toronto 67-4 to in the second half. Fortunately, we're in for a different second half tonight. Well, that's right. I mean, the Toronto Argonauts 0-3 at home this season have a chance here. You know, they've had a chance in two of those three games to come up with a win. They lost with a bad fourth quarter against the BC Lions, and they lost a one-point game to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers at home. They're back in position to try and get that first home win. Interesting choice here. It's third and less than a yard, and Medlock on to kick a field goal. He gets it. Argos take the lead at 13-10. And a reminder that Wendy's Kick for a Million is back. You have a chance to be one of four to go head-to-head -to, -head to qualify for the live halftime show. Enter at tsn.ca slash Wendy's, plus upsize your Wendy's combo and get a game card to get bonus entries. All of a sudden now, when I drive by fields, I see people out there kicking. Suit and ties, doesn't matter. Thought you were going to tell me all of a sudden you're upsizing. <laughs> <laughs> I upsize every time anyway. Yeah, it was an interesting decision, you know, Chris, and I know I know where you're going with it in that You know a team that that's struggling wants to play aggressively Maybe go ahead and try and get that first down and see if you can get a major But I think a couple of things here for Bart Andrews one is it's such a close game The other is his defense has played real well other than one drive I think he's he's got to be pretty confident that his defense can go get a stop so in a close game with a strong defense Maybe justifies the decision on, on third and less than a yard to go ahead and kick the field goal, get the three points. And Dwight Anderson with a huge play on the corner when it looked like Robertson, but from our vantage point, was going to be down around the five-yard line. Roberts, Robertson stopped a yard short of the first down, and instead of a possible seven, it's a three-point Toronto lead. Big game for both these teams. Calgary trying to get back to 504 and four. The Argos attempting to tie Winnipeg at three and five should they win tonight. Titus Ryan with the return and he'll fall forward across the 40 yard line. Well, we have a new.